Alright, welcome back for one more video on MC Delta T and ML. I know this is getting to be a lot of videos, but I want this to be I want this one to be a review specifically on questions where it was like this. You were taking a piece of ice and putting that piece of ice in the water, because this is a very, very, very common type of question. So we'll actually in this video we'll do a couple of problems. We'll do like where somebody puts ice in the water and then we'll go back and we'll do one where somebody takes a cloud of steam and then puts a steam in the water. So anyway, so we'll take a look at these two questions in particular in here. So basically this is nothing but a gigantic MC Delta T and ML type question. And I've got a little way of doing this that I think makes it's the most straightforward and makes the most sense. So let's just go straight into doing this problem. And so what I'm going to do first is try and recognize all the cues in this question. I'm going to have a cue for the water and a cue for the glass. Those are going to be the easiest. So we've got some water in a glass, and it's all at thermal equilibrium. And if you're wondering why in all my examples I'm going to put them in a glass, it's because C for glass, well, C for glass is 0.2 calories per gram Celsius degree, and I really like that. I also know something else. If the water and the glass are in equilibrium, if the water has got a temperature of 20 degrees, then that means the temperature initial of the glass is also 20 degrees. So let's go ahead and start doing this problem. So as we do this, we're going to have a Q for the water. So I'm going to just I'm going to write out a sum of the Qs. I'm going to have a Q for my water, and that water is going to end up. It's probably going to chill off because we're putting an ice cube in the water. So I'm going to have a Q for the water to go from 20 to some temperature final. I don't know what that temperature final is going to do, but I know it's going to be less than 20. I'm also going to have a Q for the glass. I'll just put QG here. And it's going to go from 20 down to some temperature is final as well. And now I can actually get up here and start talking about the ice in this question. So the ice, here's the thing. You're going to throw the ice in the water, and the ice is going to start melting. So let's say that we do this, and we throw the ice in the water. All right, well, we're going to have a Q for the ice. We're actually going to have three Qs for this ice, because here's the thing. Before you can melt the ice, this problem was kind of a jerk. It started you at negative 10. Now, it would be nice if it started you at zero, but this one doesn't. So we're going to have to have a Q for the ice to go from negative 10 to zero. We've got to heat the ice up before you can start to melt it. Now, we need a Q for the ice. Once it's melted, we need an LF now. So once you've actually, I said melted, I didn't mean that. Once you heat the ice to zero, you can then start to melt the ice. And now I need one more Q. Plus... Q for the ice, and when you've melted all the ice, now you're, it's going to go from zero up to some TF, and all this is equal to zero. So here is my entire question right there. I have five Qs, and it's kind of easy. You can put it in your head. If the ice is at negative 10, you will have three Qs in that question when you're finding this temperature final. Well, let's just go straight in and start plugging in numbers. So we're going to have four MC delta T's and an MLF in this problem. So for the water, let's see, I'm going to have 200 times C for water is 1 times TF minus 20. I'm using a little finer tip marker here so I'll have room. Uh, plus, let's see, my glass, I've got a 100 gram piece of glass times 0.2 times TF minus 20 again, plus, keep going with this, well, let's see, now I'm to the ice, so I've got 40 grams of ice times, now remember, C for ice is not 1, C for ice is 0.5, so times, now this is going to be Remember, what does this mean, MC delta T? Remember, delta T means final minus initial. I don't ever write that out, but that's what it means. So for the ice, it's going to be 0 minus negative 10. Well, 0 minus negative 10 is just 
10. Well, that was nice. Then plus, let's see if we can keep going. Plus, now we've got an MLF. So plus, now we're going to melt the ice. 40 times 80 is LF for an ice cube. Plus, and we're not done, and I'm actually going to run out a little bit of room on my paper and have to like jam it in here. But now we're going to have one more Q for the ice. And so the last Q is going to be 40 times 1. This is where everybody messes up. Because you see, over here, this was the ice cube, negative 10 to 0. So we used 0.5. But we melted it, which means by the time we get to here, we're calling it ice, but it's not in a physical state of ice anymore. Now it's water, so we get to use 1 times... And this would be TF minus 0, which would just be TF, and everything is set equal to 0. So now we can go through and start condensing all this. Uh, so we're going to have 200 times 1 times TF minus 1. So this would be 200 TF, then let's see, minus 4, 0, 0, 0. 100 times 0.2 is 20, so this would be 20 times TF, so plus 20 TF, 20 t minus 20 is minus 400. Then let's see, 40 times a half is 20, 20 times 10 is 200, so plus 200. Uh, plus, oh my goodness, just keeps going, 40 times 80, well let's see, that would be 32 with two zeros. And then finally, 40 times TF, which would be plus 40 TF, and it's all equal to zero. My goodness, we've got a lot here. So combine like terms, 200 TF, so it's 220 and 260 for my TF, so 260 TF. Now, let's see if we got this. Minus 4,000. And then we got minus, so now we're at negative 4,400. Oh, my goodness. Take a look at this. We got minus 4,000. I'm going to go and do this. Plus 3,200. So that's minus 800. Then there's a plus 200. So that's minus 600. So there's another. So if my, in my head is right, that's minus 1,000. I feel pretty pretty good about that. Hopefully I didn't miss anything. If so, I'm sure somebody will remind me. And I've come out to negative number, and I like that. So this is 260 TF equals 1000. So now my temperature is going to be greater than zero, and that is important. 1000 divided by 260, 3.8 degrees Celsius. Now, this problem is a great problem. And a lot of times a question might say, how much ice is left? Well, you would say, no ice left. And you would say your final temperature is 3.8 degrees. Now, what should be your concern is what happens when the final temperature comes jacked up. In other words, I'm saying this. What happens if you work this whole thing out? Oh, it's so beautiful. It's so much work. And your answer comes out like temperature initial equals negative 10 or something like this. Well, here's the thing. If you do what we just did and the temperature, excuse me, temperature final, if the temperature final comes out to negative, in other words, your answer needs to be between a 0 and 100 whenever you do one of these for temperature final. If it doesn't, then everything you just did is a muck, as in the temperature final is not 0 to 100. It means that the ice actually didn't melt. You may have started with 40 grams, but there's actually still some ice floating in the water. So now I guess what we need to do is this. What happens if you work this problem and you don't get an answer? So in other words, you work the problem, you don't get this nice between 0 and 100. In theory, it should be between 0 and 20 since that was the temperature initial. But anyway, so let's go do one more of these. And this one's going to be, I'll go ahead and tell you, here it is. It's the same numbers as last time, except I did one thing different. I got a little bigger cube of ice. 
And what's going to happen is this. I'll go and tell you, if we work this one out, temperature final comes out mauled. And you're going to be like, oh, and I did all that work. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you in advance. This one won't work. Your answer comes out to like negative something. So I'm going to save you the time of doing this. So how do you do the sum of the Q's for the question where all the ice doesn't melt? It's not that much harder. Matter of fact, it's easier, to be honest. All you're going to do is you're going to have a Q for the water to go from. Here's where it gets easier. You see, here's the thing. I don't know why I just wrote negative 20 there. Water is at 20. So we're going to have a Q for the water to go from 20, a Q for the water to go from 20 to temperature final, which is zero. You see, if the ice doesn't melt, your temperature final is going to be zero. That's what's going to happen. So you're going to have a Q for the water to go from 20 to zero. Plus, you're going to have a Q for the glass. I cannot make the letter G, apparently. A Q for the glass to go from, well, the glass would do the same thing. It would go from 20 to zero. So the temperature final is zero. And now we'll come back plus. Well, let's look at the ice. You're still going to have a Q for the ice to go from negative 10 to zero. Because we still, if we're going to try and melt any of the ice, we've got to get the temperature to zero. And now, plus one more, a Q for the ice to LF. Now, but notice something, equals zero. I'm done. Because here's the thing, I don't have that last Q for ice because I'm stopping at the melting part. Because the what's going on in this problem is this, you're going to look for this mass. You're going to look to see how much ice melts in this question. So let's go straight to working this problem out. So let's see what we got. We got Q for water. So make sure I get this on camera. This will be 200 times 1 times 0, 0 minus 20, which would be negative 20, plus the glass I had 100. So 100 times 0.2 times 0 minus 20. Well, that's minus 20 as well, plus... Now we need a Q for the ice. We have in this question, we have 60 grams. Here's the thing. Everybody gets messed up here. Some people think we're still we're looking for the mass of the ice here. No, the mass of the ice in this part is still 60. Let me explain why. 60 times a half times 0 minus negative 10, which would just be 10. You see, before the ice can melt, you've got to heat all the ice to zero. So before you can start melting ice, you've got to heat it to zero. Plus, now here's the thing, mass of ice times 80 equals zero. So we're going to know how much of this ice melts in this last step. Let's see if we can't do some numbers here. 200 times 1 times negative 20 would be negative 4, 0, 0, one more 0. And then let's see what we got here. This is pretty much 20 times negative 20, which would be negative 400. Then over here we've got 60 times a half. 60 times a half would be 30, 30 times 10. So plus 3, 0, 30 times 10 is 300, plus 80. M I equals zero. So we've got negative forty one hundred plus eighty M I equals zero. If you look, all our math looks great. If I'll push my paper up. So eighty M I equals forty one hundred. So forty one hundred divided by eighty. Fifty one point two five grams of ice has melted. Now a lot of times the questions books ask, ah, I'm messing up here. A lot of the times books now will kind of trick you or test your teachers. And they'll say, 
if you really read the question, they'll say, how much ice is left in the problem? Well, this is how much ice melted, is what you found. Well, if you started with 60 grams of ice, that means there's 8.75 grams of ice remaining, and TF is 0 degrees Celsius. There. And you didn't read any of that because I'm not writing anything on the paper, apparently. Ah. So, there you go. This would actually be the answer to this question. So, again, what's different is this. If you've already worked the problem, the answer came out all screwed up, go back, make temperature final zero, stop when you get to the LF, and that's the end of because you're not going to melt all the ice. Now, let's do one more question. And if you're to this point 16 minutes in this video, hopefully you'll watch just a couple more minutes and do this problem. What would this problem look like if it was steam in here? And again, same question, what's temperature final? So it's kind of like going to Starbucks and getting one of those little cafe mocha latte chino thingies. So... Anyway, we're going to put some steam into this water, which should heat up the water. Well, first off, it's the same thing. Q for water has got to go from 20 to some temperature final. Plus, we're going to have a Q for the glass. And again, I like doing glass because C is 0.2. And the glass would also be at 20 to some temperature final. Plus, now for the steam. Well, here's the thing. You're going to have a Q for the steam. You're going to have a Q for the steam. First off, before this steam can not be steam, you got to cool it off. That steam is going to have to cool down from 120 to 100 before it can change phase. Now, plus, now you're going to have a Q for the steam. You're going to have the, another Q for the steam to actually, now notice this, negative LV, because you're actually going from steam, turning it back in the water, so you're going to remove energy from the steam. So you have a negative LV. Now you're going to need one more. Plus, you need a Q for the steam to go. It's just like doing the one with ice, except in steam, your last temperature was 100, so you've got to cool it from 100 down to some temperature final. I've ran out of room here, but, oh, wait, post-it note. I knew I'd use this stack for something one day. And all this is equal to zero. So you still have your five Qs. Again, if the problem wanted to be a sweetheart and make it just a little bit easier on you, what the question would do would be start you at 100. And if it starts you at 100, then you'd get to skip this first 120 to 100 step. But anyway, let's go ahead and work this problem out. So we've got five Qs. So we're going to have, oh, that's wrong marker. I need one a little bit smaller. We're going to have a Q for water. Let's see, 200 times 1 times, let's see, this would be TF minus 20. Plus, now a Q for the glass to go 100 times 0.2 times TF minus 20 again. Now, again, plus, now we've got a Q for the steam. Well, we had 20 grams of steam, so 20 times 0.48 is what steam-specific heat is, times... 100 minus 120 would be minus negative 20, so that's easy enough. Now, plus a mass of steam, well, we had 20 grams of steam, times negative 540, because here we're actually cooling the steam off. Hey, let's use the little post-it note. I think this will work. Plus, let's see if we got this plus 20 times, now remember, 
the steam is no longer steam. It's turned into water. So 20 times 1 times TF minus 100. Everything equal to 0. Good grief. That's, that's a long problem. Thank goodness for post-it notes. All right, well, let's start going through and combining like terms and multiplying all that. So this would be 200 TF. Minus four zero, give me two more zeros, plus 20 TF, you should be racing me, minus 400, and doggone it, a calculator, 0.48, wrecking my world, 20 times 0.48 times negative 20, negative 192, so minus 192, plus... Well, actually, it's not even going to be plus. It's going to be minus. 20 times 540. So 20 times 540. Why am I putting that in a calculator? So anyway, 20 times 540 minus 10,800 plus one more time. 20 times TF. So it would be 20 TF minus 2,000. Is that right? Everything's equal to zero. Now combine all my like terms. Looks like I've got 220 and 20 on the TFs. So I've got 240 TF. Let's do this. Minus 4,000. Minus 400. Minus 192. Minus 10,800. Minus 2,000, negative 17,392, negative 17,392 equals zero. By the way, I love the fact that this says minus because then this means 240 TF is equal to 17,392. And why that is so good is it means my answer is going to come out between... 0 and 100, and that's what's good on these questions. Otherwise, we'd have to go back, cut off the last piece, just like on the ice question, and solve for the mass of the steam that was converted right here in that step. It would also make all the temperature finals. Let's see, if you're doing the problem with ice, all the temperature finals turn into 0 when the ice doesn't melt. So if you're doing a question with steam, and not all the steam turned into water, that means all your temperature finals would be stuck at 100 all the way through. But anyway, TF would be, and I'm ready to put an end to this question, 17, 3, 9, 2, divided by 2, 4, 0, 72.5 degrees, 72.5 degrees. So that is the final temperature. If you can do this, you should be an MC Delta T monster. Look at all these markers. I got like markers and pens and look at look look at look at look at look look. Is this not amazing? I even have a can opener. I don't even know why I have a can opener. Oh, I got glasses too. Oh, and the top to a Mountain Dew and one random remote control and there's two more pens and all this is on my desk. But anyway, bye y'all.